Different perspective right now, maybe a significantly different perspective. Senator Rand Paul, Republican of Kentucky, is joining us right now. Senator, thanks very much for coming in. Glad to be here. So give me, a, in a nutshell, did you love the president's speech? Uh, well, you know, I was a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, he, uh, if you were listening to him, you might have felt like, well, gosh, everything's fine. The country's thriving again. 20 million people are either out of work, underemployed, or have given up looking for work. 20 million people, if you measured it like we used to measure it, 13% unemployment. I mean, we have a lot of problems. So I think there really needs to be a debate in our country. How do we create jobs? And I didn't hear anything new from the president. Well, he, he outlined a whole series of initiatives, and he said if you're not going to work with him, Republicans, he's going to take executive action in a dozen areas and do it alone by himself. You, gotta, you have a problem with that? It didn't sound very conciliatory. The other thing is, is the one part of our country that is thriving, that is creating jobs, probably the biggest industry that's creating jobs, he did mention, oil and gas. But the problem is, is you, what he then mentioned, I'm going to raise taxes on oil and gas. Exactly the wrong thing you want to do on the one industry in our country that's really doing well. He was talking well. about the, the oil industry, and he talked about $4 billion that they get in tax breaks, which he says they don't need. He wants to invest in natural gas, in solar, in cleaner energy. Yeah, but do you think we ought to be thinking about where are the job, where is the job creation right now? It's in the oil and gas industry. So on the one hand, he brags about it. On the other hand, he says, I'm going to punish them for their success. That's where the jobs are being created. We should do the opposite. We should lower taxes on any industry, but really on the oil and gas industry because it's doing well. Let's he, let it do better. He announced on uh, increasing the minimum wage that federal contractors would get an increase immediately to $10.10 an hour, which is not you know, a huge amount of money right. by any means, but it's a little bit more than the current minimum wage. Are you with him on that? Right. If you increase the price of something, you'll get less of it. So all of the studies, virtually all of the studies show that if you increase the minimum wage, you get higher unemployment, particularly teenage unemployment, particularly black You believe teenagers. in a minimum wage? Well, I think that when you look at raising it, all of the studies show that if you raise it, you get more unemployment. So really, the marketplace does a better job at determining what this should so be. So there shouldn't be any minimum federal minimum wage? I'm not so sure I'm saying that, but I think what well, I am, I'm not, I'm not sure I have an answer as far as whether there is a United right or States wrong. United States Senator, you've thought about well, whether or not there not should be a federal. Not necessarily, but what I have thought about is that raising the minimum wage causes more unemployment. When we have 20 million people out of work, I think it's a bad idea to raise it. And a good way to look at this is, see, he looks at it from an emotional point of view. He says, well, more money's good. Well, yeah, well, why don't we make it $15 an hour? Because people acknowledge that there is some price at which it does cause unemployment. Why not make it $50 or $100 well, an hour? There is a point at which the price does cause unemployment. But every every... Every increase, there is some point and some unemployment that will be called. But there's a philosophical division you have there that you're not sure you even support a, a minimum wage. Well, the discussion really isn't about whether you have one or not. The discussion right now is the incremental increase. All right, let's talk about uh, Obamacare, the affordable care. You're a physician. Uh, you heard the president outline the millions of Americans who are now benefiting from Obamacare because if they had pre-existing conditions, they can get insurance right now that cannot be taken away from them. Right. You're with him on that as a physician. Right. Well, he didn't mention that more people have been canceled than have gotten insurance. He bragged about Kentucky, my state, had the governor there to pat him on the back. But the people signing up in my state are getting Medicaid. In fact, they sent my son a Medicaid card. So really, I don't know if it's a great advantage to sign a lot of people up for free health care. We really aren't signing people up to pay for health care. We're signing people up that the rest of the working people have to pay for. And this may well bankrupt hospitals in our state. Sure, I want everybody to have health insurance. I want to take care of people. I consider it my obligation as a physician, both personally and for religious reasons, to take care of people, and I do. And I'm part of a large group of physicians who always have. But I don't think the government providing it and doing it is a good idea, and it, I think it's going to backfire and, and less people have insurance. You're a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. In one area, I suspect you do agree with the president when he said he would veto legislation in Congress that imposed new sanctions on Iran right now during the six-month period when we're testing them to see right. if they are really going to deal with this nuclear uh, issue. Uh, you're not with the other Republicans who say you will vote for new sanctions. I've been for sanctions and have voted for sanctions in the past to try to get the Iranians to negotiate. I think while they're negotiating, and if we can see that they're negotiating in good faith, 
I don't think it's a good idea to pass sanctions while we're in the midst of negotiations. However, the one thing I would have done differently than the president is I would have delayed the release of sanctions until after we had compliance. So I would have had at least several month delay where we can see that we're getting but compliance. But the Iranians wouldn't have done anything if maybe. there wouldn't have been a quid, uh, quid pro quo, if you will. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm not sure exactly where that would have been. But my preference would have been for at least some delay to show compliance before we remove controls. Now, they have also argued that they could reapply the sanctions. I think the bottom line is we should give negotiations a chance. My hope is that sanctions will avoid war. We've been involved in two long wars in the Middle East, and I think it'd be best if we can do anything possible to try to avoid another war now. Senator Paul, thanks for, very much for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Uh, Rand Paul, the Republican of Kentucky. Anderson, back to you.